think it has been yeah. uh, the silverbacks were recognized <laughs> by the 11th parliament <laughs> and uh, the parliament seconded that government should extend uh, financial support to the silver day and the show is slam dunk basketball where we discuss dissect and talk about the beautiful game of basketball my name is felix opal in studio as usual i'm with my co-host emma emmanuel yes felix. how has slam dunk basketball talk been i've missed uh being on the show uh, slam dunk basketball talk has, it, it has been good but you know when you have a missing element you know there's always that thing so it's really good to have you back Thank you. Um, I know you haven't been well, but you know, you yeah. got some strength and decided to, you know, come here today, yeah. which is a very good thing. It's a plus for you. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my health has not been uh, uh, that well, but thanks to God and uh, the miracle of science, uh, yes, I'm able to be here. And uh, yes, we can have <laughs> our lovely talk of the beautiful game of basketball. Yeah, before we get into that, I was just wondering, is, is your health because, you know, you have to be in a vulnerable position to get that money from government? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> There was no money from government. People, I kept on charging my phone so that I can ensure that <laughs> the message of comes. Anything, I don't miss the message, but the message up to now is not there. And uh, uh, now the lockdown has eased, so yeah. we shouldn't be expecting, <laughs> so expecting for, that. For those who didn't get it's done for them. Uh, it's, done and done, it's done and dusted. Monday, yeah. uh, business will go back almost 80% to yeah. the usual, so. <laughs> you, you, can, you, can, you can't say. Yeah. Mm. A lot has been happening, Emma, but before we get into the talk of basketball, yeah. we, we can't. Uh, this is a different Saturday, and this is a special week yeah. for Uganda as a nation. Mm. We were able to get two Olympic medals, medals. Yeah. Uh, a silver and a, bronze. and a bronze. And it's the first time in Ugandan sporting history yeah. for us to actually register two olympic medals in one sporting event yeah how did you feel when you saw our boys crossing the line despite missing out on the gold you know it's a it's a very proud moment for all of us as ugandans you know back in the day it was more like ah oh, we're going to take part in the olympics and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we'll just take our guys there they will have a good experience and come back mm -hmm. but now we are actually contenders mm -hmm. okay and seeing uh those guys get you know the bronze and the silver you know really makes you feel mm -hmm. proud of you know being a ugandan it puts us out there on the map and says that you know we are here and our time it, it's like now that our genesis has started okay these guys have opened it for us and i believe that you know these other athletes who are coming in are really going to start put uganda on that map you know so it was a very proud moment for me as a, a very ugandan. proud moment I, uh, I remember a chair you know despite not having that enough strength towards yeah. the five last laps yeah. when it was getting very very close and wow it was uh it was, it was an adrenaline rush yeah nail biting situation yeah. as they say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hopefully in the coming events we'll be able to to score a gold medal yeah. which will be a very also big achievement yeah i think for us as a country and a sporting fraternity yeah i think we have uh, more competitions today and tomorrow the ladies will be yeah, taking ladies part in the 800 meters yes yeah uh, halima nakai and yeah. uh Nanyo yeah so hopefully, you know, they will also get us something, you know, we pray and uh, for everyone who's out there, if you have an opportunity to catch the ladies running, please do. Uh, even if you know you're cheering from <laughs> your yeah. sitting room or your bedroom, yeah. there's or always that feeling phone. that, oh, on your phone, yeah. you know, it's always a good thing to be a part of that experience with all, you know, our athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely, quite, uh, quite interesting. We'll say a week it has been, yeah. uh, the Silverbacks were recognized by the 11th parliament <laughs> and uh, the parliament seconded that government should extend uh, financial support to the silverbacks for yeah. qualification for the afro basket yeah. mm. you know the amazing thing is that uh, you would think that someone who's involved with sports or basketball would be the one to raise that motion in the parliament yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was quite ironic that the person who raised uh, and who, who raised the motion is not into the basketball yeah uh, honorable santa Lu. santa honorable santa Lu from from a womb then the more ironic bit uh, is that the, the the member of parliament who seconded the motion is also a FUFA president uh, Moses <laughs> So it was not anyone from the basketball circles yeah that's, that's, that's what that's made it, thing. Make, makes it ironic yeah i mean first of all i want to ask why it took that long i mean you see in other countries you know when uh they have a certain achievement it then mm. really matter whether it's basketball football anything mm -hmm. they're always quick to honor uh mm. their athletes take an example of the nba 
whenever there is a new champion mm-hmm. they go to the white house yeah, definitely. okay they are hosted by the they president they are hosted by the president you know mm-hmm. then we come down to uganda and it came as a shock i checked on my phone in the morning and i'm like okay you're like am i <laughs> yeah, is this a, is this one a of dream those online, online pranks <laughs> i thought someone was pranking us at first mm. then i saw it in the news later and mm. i'm like oh finally uganda actually mm. has decided you know to put some light mm. on our silver box but then again uh on the flip side you know you always have those people who jump on that bandwagon of course you know? uh, <laughs> what, 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 what would you call it um uh, populism uh, yes yeah, someone who just wants to jump there because they're going to get some live like yeah, 15 minutes of, of fame yes so i think also you know fufa also tried to jump on that mm. <laughs> bandwagon and yeah but on on the other side it, it it's 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 a big step for ugandan basketball mm. to see that we can be recognized you know in the parliament yeah. which shows that we're getting somewhere we're, we're yeah. definitely getting, yeah, we're getting somewhere, somewhere and, uh, basketball. by our boys qualifying for afro basketball yeah. it was quite something i remember the previous time when we were here we were discussing that we need to do everything to ensure that we get that morocco win yeah. so that we save ourselves yeah. the trip to cape fat yeah because remember pr- prior to going the fi- the key thing which was hindering the team were finances finances yes Fuba president necessary joji came out and said that actually revealed not said revealed yeah that the national team steering committee actually had to go to Manilenda <laughs> for the team to actually make a trip you know when you let's say you have a child and you're supposed to pay for them school fees okay and we assume that you actually can't pay the school fees mm-hmm. okay but you leave your child to go out to maybe aunties and uncles and mm-hmm. manilenders here and there mm-hmm. it it doesn't really look good definitely okay mm. and that's where basketball found themselves i mean mm. the president is going out to money lenders and telling people you know what uh, if we win we shall pay you back yeah. you know making promises here and there mm. then the international guys paying for their own flights uh, some of them paying for their mm. own uh, the places where they have to stay yeah. you know it was a really sad moment for united basketball yeah because and uh, according to fuba president they even had to use their contacts yeah. here with uh, booking agents to ensure that they get the tickets yeah. to fly the team first to uh Cairo for the camp and yeah. to connect so it, it it is that kind of desperate situation yeah mm. but you know I'm also kind of glad that um we are going to Chigali to compete in the Afro basket because let's mm. say we had to take another trip let's say to, to Tunisia somewhere you know if the worst comes to the worst <laughs> we can always jump in a bus mm. <laughs> and find ourselves you know and find in, ourselves in, there. in Chigali which is a good thing it, it is going to be quite a, a very hard task out there yeah. uh, uh, speaking to uh, coach Manje Juni uh, prior to the show he was uh, giving me an insight yeah. on, the, on the updates so far the team is supposed to is meant to travel to Alexandria for camp mm. on the 7th yeah they would have gone earlier but of course the issue that we've just been discussing yeah finances and uh, he was uh, revealing that when you look at other teams the moment they finished they already in camp mm. so now remember we have a short window yeah mm, to the 25th mm. of August when we play our first game yeah now uh after the camp that is when we fly down to chigali on 19th yeah so you can see that already we are at a disadvantage but, with our, but we're always at that disadvantage <laughs> with, our, with the competition <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is that we're always at that disadvantage you know mm. i haven't seen any time in the history of ugandan basketball where we have you know at least prepared six months prior, prior to, to our that. tournament mm. you know it's always our two weeks three weeks mm. here and there one, let's one get week. things together one yeah. week yeah. and you know mm. but i'm also glad that uh, they'll be flying uh, to alexandria because mm. i believe that with all the friendlies they'll play there they'll yeah. actually put them in a better position because i know the international guys have been working out but you know in uganda with this lockdown you know the boys came from those uh, the qualifiers yeah the match fitness home. is uh, yeah, not it's, yet up there. yeah it's not yet up there so mm. it's a really good thing for them and mm. uh, we pray that the fitness will get there before the 25th mm. you know because it's a really good opportunity mm. for us to play and uh, speak about that i did you take a look at the group that we are in you know there's always uh, this talk of which is the group of death uh, uh, <laughs> when uh, when i looked at the group I actually I, I, no one has to tell us that we're the ones who are in the group of death uh, because uh, the silverbacks uh, are built up against uh, cameroon senegal and south sudan yeah uh we play senegal uh 
first yeah. on the 25th. On the 25th. Then after that we play Cameroon. Yeah. Then we play South, South Sudan, Sudan last. Yeah. Now according to the format of the Afro basketball, the top two teams in each pool are the ones which qualify. automatically qualify. Yeah. Then it comes down to that whole calculation mathematics of uh, <laughs> to get the best loser, the, the, the third <laughs> loser, and what, which is also a bit complicated head to head. But yeah. Yeah. That, but we don't want to be in that kind of situation. Yeah, we always find ourselves somewhere there. Mm. Like I told you last time, you know, with the football situation, <laughs> we always <laughs> find ourselves down to mathematics. But looking at the other teams, I mean, you have South Sudan, uh, which is really new. Which is know. new and uh, most, when you look at uh, the articles online, mm. they are considering them the underdogs in the group. Yeah. However, in my, in my <laughs> view, I think they are actually the black horses in the group, they are the surprise package. Yeah in that group and when you don't know which, which players they're going to they're, they're going to fly in. yeah mm -hmm. and you know their road to afro basket was also they had to get a wild card here somewhere <laughs> which also created it. a lot of stars. yeah a lot of that then you have luol deng taking over as you know the president mm -hmm. and you know him coming with that kind of experience and also that kind of uh, knowledge you know applying the knowledge you got from the usa mm -hmm into south sudan basketball i think it, it then make them an underdog as people would say like you said it makes them like a dark horse you know you don't know what to expect from you these guys you don't know what to expect they're going to yeah. surprise us yeah and first of all with even the team that they, 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 they're going to bring yeah. they might come up with uh, six or seven new players and you find some of these guys actually play in the nba yeah. in bigger leagues yeah. outside yeah. Yeah. turkey in turkey yeah. and all these other leagues so i guess they are a team really to watch out for then also news coming in is that uh, taco fall from the oh. boston celtics boston celtics <laughs> seven foot five center will be coming down mm. to play for senegal now i am trying to imagine a situation eh, uh, where ishmael wright who is six feet five has to play defense on someone who's seven feet five yeah <laughs> this is a situation whereby you wish you had a second gombia because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it, it's going to be because he only you, he'll be limited to one thing fouling the yeah, game. yeah yeah he has to foul him he didn't really have a choice you know and uh it, it, that goes back to the earlier things that we've been talking about basketball development you know i know you know for a fact that there must be another gombia Definitely. That we have somewhere in Uganda. Yeah, we do. We, uh, b b before even going to the talk of going to uh, northern Uganda yeah. and looking for players and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's quite it, it's it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's, it's quite going interesting. to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah. It is slam dunk basketball on a beautiful, glorious Saturday. When we come back, we discuss some of the preparations and more of what Coach Mandi Juruni has in stock as we prepare for Afro basketball. struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed technology has come in they've moved on yes we're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to tiktok has surpassed what's yap mm -hmm. the other one i call uh, it, I, I never call it facebook it's book face <laughs> why are you on book face <laughs> dad it's facebook yes. Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, yeah. and then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes.
Welcome back to the show Islam Dunk Basketball. My name is Felix Opal and in studio I'm with my co-host Emmanuel Aten. Before we went for the break, we we're discussing uh, silverbacks yeah. and our variation in terms of size. Yeah. We're talking about uh, Taco Fall. Yeah, we're talking about Taco Fall, you know, him being 7'5. And that's mm -hmm. not even the biggest issue. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> issue there is that he has played in the NBA, has a lot of experience. He studied in the states mm -hmm. so you know bringing all that experience then you add it to his height mm -hmm. is really a big advantage for him then you contrast that to mm -hmm. the kind of height that we have in uganda i think the tallest guy we have on the team is uh six six seven who is titus mm -hmm. and you know matching up against a guy who's first of all that tall then he has that much experience is really going to be a hard thing for us uh so it, we, we find ourselves in a position whereby we have to play small ball just like the rockets did when they had uh mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. we have to uh, play small small ball basically mm -hmm. okay and um, when we went for the qualifiers uh, mm -hmm. the coaches were basically talking more about defense they were focusing on yeah. defense yeah. okay and I think that is something that we're going to need to do more mm -hmm. of you know play better defense because uh, we are unmatched when it comes to science and it's not something that we can argue about that is the truth when we look at South Sudan yeah. you know the shortest guy is probably 6'4", yeah, who is six, the point four, guard, six, five, yeah. and our tallest guy is 6'7". Mm -hmm. Look at Cameroon, those guys are tall and they have size, we are smaller. Uh, actually, when you look at, uh, uh, when you go to the, the, the various pages, yeah. when you look at Cameroon, in a way we kind of try to match up in size. Yeah. However, we do not match up when it comes to physique. Yeah. When, because <laughs> when I was trying to look at... Uh, look at height and then you look at the weight of the of the player yeah. so when it comes to this a player might be the same the same height as uh, james okelo yeah. uh, our power forward but when you look at their physique and you compare that to that of james okelo or let's say that of uh, titus rao yeah. you definitely see a total mismatch yeah but in every situation looking at our group and how we're able to qualify mm. uh, the biggest advantage that the silverbacks have is that we are more agile yeah that's true we're more agile and we're more quick yeah so what we lack in size i believe we make, we make up, up more in speed <laughs> so i don't know if the coaching staff is going to use that yeah. to, to be like the advantage in here because totally when it comes to size it's going to be a different yeah, it's a total mismatch a total mi mismatch yeah uh, Coach Mandy Juruni uh, was confirming to me that uh, a number of foreign players are mm. going to be added on to the team. Yeah. And this time around, it's not that the local best players are going to be clipped, mm. even the foreign best players. Cause They're going to be clipped. Now, the assumption, I believe, is that um, they're looking for size yeah so that we can try to have a competitive advantage <laughs> on the floor uh, yeah so it, it's interesting so now we're back in the market i guess definitely if it's in that perspective uh, yeah. I, I believe alberta hardway and Abutendo oh. are having <laughs> sleepless that, nights yeah, Alberta Hardway uh, <laughs> for our viewers out there is the team manager of the silverbacks and uh. Rutendo is uh one of the people on the coaching staff but mm. they are very pivotal when it comes to selecting yeah. the, uh, the foreign best players. And I believe that you know up to now they have done a very good job because mm. even if you look at the past uh, teams that qualified for Alpha Basket you know they, they they really picked good players who fitted you know with the system mm. okay mm. our previous qualifications if I mean if you go back and look at the players who are the, uh, that team would mm. say that Tendo and uh, mm. have mm. have really got this thing down of you know selecting players it's not like uh, you just go to the market and say ah mm. this guy is tall you know this guy can dribble the basketball so mm. let's just throw them there i think they have a vision in mind you know and mm. i believe that that vision is actually being realized slowly by slowly and and, uh, uh, and also most importantly when you look at uh, the intangibles that they're, they're trying to build this kind of philosophy yeah. onto the silverbacks team. Yeah. Mm. Which is a good thing. Um, each team needs that philosophy. And also us getting uh, that American coach has really, you know, changed the way we play George basketball. Giannacopoulos. Yeah, he has that <laughs> very complicated <laughs> name. But I think, you know, you remember the basketball that we used to play in Uganda was, they call it run and gun basketball. 
pick the ball, you know, try yeah. to reach the other side as no, fast as you can. As long as you see a person <laughs> who's there, you just throw them that <laughs> Throw ball. the ball, you know, let's yeah. score as fast as we can. So it's basically transition basketball. Transition basketball. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, with our smart guards, we have down here like uh, Tony Dwileba, mm-hmm. you have um, different guys, really. And uh, uh, the, 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 one of the debutants, uh, Karen Ziwa. He yeah, did, Karen uh, Ziwa. He Jimmy a, Nabu. A terrific job. Yeah, yeah. so... The, the playing field is changing for us. We are not now locked to the kind of basketball that mm-hmm. we used to play, mm-hmm. you know, because basketball is a game that really evolves, okay? And if you really can't evolve with the sport, then you're really going to suffer. And Uganda has been evolving for a time now, and just our presence in the ba- Afro, Afro basket, then you have teams like City Oil also making it big in the, on the international scene, you know, mm-hmm. shows that uh, basketball is going somewhere. You know, we're on the right path. You know, and um, if we make it good during the for basket, you know, I believe that not only is our ranking in FIBA going to go up, you know, but also, you know, these international leagues, these international bodies, different scouts mm-hmm. are going to start looking uh, at Uganda as a potential place to actually pick players from, which then plays a good part for us because the more players we have playing in international leagues, mm-hmm. the better for us when it comes to, you know, international games as a country. You can basically pick, you know, different people from here and there. So I believe, yeah, it's, it, we're on the right path. You know, we're going to the right place. One of uh, the youth talent coaches yeah. Yeah, uh, from uh, YMCA, uh, he's been um, going to, different parents have been contacting him. Yeah. Uh, then he comes, let's say, to their home to try and give their children skills. Mm of how to actually get to love the game, get to play the game, fundamentals. Yeah. And uh, we were having a chat with him and he was telling me with the Silverbacks and uh, what we're be- how we have qualified and the previous uh, tournaments, yeah. he has now video of uh, them and edited videos. Mm. So he's using that as a motivation tool. Yeah. He, shows the, he shows these kids that, you know what, if you do this and do it right, you're going to be wearing this jersey one day. Do you want to wear this jersey one day? Yeah. And I, I found that a very fascinating and motivation, motivating tool. Yeah, it is a very fascinating thing. I mean, when you have, let's say, someone to look up to. Okay, those days it used to be us looking up to, you know, I want to be like Michael Jordan. I want to be like LeBron James and all these things. Mm-hmm. But now when you say, I want to be like Jimmy and Nabu, mm-hmm. you know, I want to be like Stephen Omoy. Yeah. Okay, so it's... I it's, want to it's, be a power forward like James Omoy. Yes, I want to be, you know, someone someone you can actually see you can go to a league match and see the person that you want and to you be. can talk to them you can talk right? to them you know yeah. you can get an autograph from them you know <laughs> <laughs> i believe we haven't yet reached the autograph level but then it will also be good because you're like huh, you still have that national team just well. can you give it to me <laughs> that kind of thing. we haven't reached that spot of you can actually give away a jersey yeah mm. yeah but i mean <laughs> again it's a good thing mm. i believe that uh ugandan superstars if, if I can call them superstars now. They are superstars. Yeah. We are in Afro basketball. Yeah, so we should actually start, you know, mm. signing here and there. We, people should buy their autograph pens now. <laughs> that, that can happen. We'll return after this short break. It is slam dunk basketball. struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm-hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes.
Welcome back. It is Sam Dunk Basketball Talk and we're discussing the Silverbacks. Remember, we're live to our viewers out there, those in Uganda and even those in the diaspora, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and even on our website, houseoftalentug.com. Feel free to sign in, subscribe, send us your views, your comments, your remarks, your opinions, your kisses, your disses. Emma, now that the Silverbacks, we are there. We're going to Chigali. Yeah. Come August. Where are the fin where do you think the finances are going to be sprouting from? The last campaign uh, against Morocco, uh, FUBA president yeah. said approximately they needed 300 million for the camp and for the match itself, yeah. for everything. Air tickets, hotel, yeah. facilitation, medical, mm. the whole entourage. You know, yeah. there are COVID tests right, and everything. Yeah. Now, remember, this is this is even going to be longer, much tighter, more competitive. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, I hope that us being honored in the parliament is a good sign that, you know, they want to give us some kamane as we mm. say it in Uganda. Um, I basically think this is a time that the Ministry of uh, Sports okay, and the NCS should step up. There was, right. a, there, was a, there was a suggestion when uh, the Silverbacks were being uh, honored Honor. in Parliament mm. that uh, each, if each MP contributed 200,000 Uganda <laughs> shillings, eh, the, team would, uh, the National Team Steering Committee and FUBA would not actually be struggling, or they would be actually <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I mean, that's a very good perspective, because, mm. I mean, if you look at the budget uh, for the Parliament, uh, the cars, the iPads, all these things. Uh, if you could just take two, like I said, two hundred thousand. That was the same. That was yeah. the uh, suggestion. Imagine how much we'd get, you know, we for have about what over five hundred. That's piece. yeah. See, two hundred thousand from five hundred. Even if they gave you a hundred thousand shillings, mm -hmm. would have a lot of uh, finances coming in for the team. But like I said, this is the time uh, when the NCS Ministry of uh, Education and Sports should really step in and show you know out of their good favor that we are not only supporting the athletes who are taking part in the olympics and you know in what we deem as more important sports mm -hmm. but you know we're also trying to build other sports then secondly i believe that basketball has a lot of stakeholders you know uh, mm -hmm. i believe that we started a gofundme page uh, mm -hmm. for the yeah. silverbacks yeah. okay so where are people crying about oh the government is not helping us and um we need to put money together. From yes, they help should start from us. Yeah. I mean, how many change, players? Change starts from yes, you. change starts from home. How many mm. players do you have in the in the, in the FUBA league? You know, in all divisions, if each person put in, you know, a five k, ten thousand shillings, that would actually go a long way in helping uh, the Silverbacks. Then we have a lot of other players in the diaspora. You know, and I believe that they follow uh, the progress of the national team. You know, mm -hmm. if we all came together and put our hands together with the NCS, you know, with the different stakeholders here, with those in the diaspora, I believe that you know the finances that we have always been looking for shall be more than enough. We shall actually have a spillover that can be put into the other areas. You know, that are still lacking. Definitely. Yeah. Talking about the, uh, the other areas, yeah. our under sixteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. the last time we were here, uh, we were talking about you know grassroots basketball with yeah. John Omondi, mm -hmm. and by that time, uh, like there was the cancellation of the women's uh, basketball team, mm -hmm. and there was also talk of cancellation of the under 16s, you know, yeah. from taking part. Their tournament is on the fifth yeah. of it's August. Just, uh, it's just around the corner. Yeah, just around the corner, yeah, basically. It's, well, four days from now, basically. Yeah, and that was a big blow to the young ones you know as a young person you always want to you know yeah, take part that, yeah. yeah you have that passion you want to put on that you know national team that jersey energy, that zeal yeah mm -hmm. and also for their coaches was a good thing so it's it, it's a positive move mm -hmm. to see that the young ones mm -hmm. are now actually being considered because mm -hmm. basically young people are the future of anything future of basketball and if we keep cutting them off at the grassroots then there is no basketball development okay we're going to spend a lot more money uh trying to get international players yet we could actually just develop this one so for me it's a really good move mm -hmm. you know to let the under 16 go go and compete mm -hmm. you know and uh no matter how they do win or lose i mean this yeah, is it, all it, a process it is a, it's a process and uh, the experience that they would have garnered yeah. the skills the, the the motivation of wanting to actually put in more personal effort yeah. that would be 
naturally instill yeah, yeah. because uh, a coach will teach you tactics will teach you plays will teach you fundamentals yeah. but things like passion discipline yeah. some things are naturally instilled in a player yeah. the player has to actually see them uh emma we got into uh, a tight situation as a basketball fraternity yeah. when the national council of sports halted basketball yeah sport has been open back again yeah by the head of state what should be done so that fuba is not caught in the same mousetrap <laughs> mm -hmm. well um that's how i see it as a mousetrap uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm. there should be a plan and i hope there is a plan okay there should be a plan <laughs> and you hope there, should there, be is, a there is a plan <laughs> because by the time uh the league was stopped okay we, we, we should always see things on two, they, they say a coin has two sides on one side of the coin basketball has stopped and we couldn't really take part mm. but on the flip side of the coin it also gives us time to replan because before the league was stopped we had already started facing issues so many yeah. issues so many issues yeah. you know? right, that's actually violated <laughs> so many of the regulations yeah and rules which were given by national council of sports exactly mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so i believe that that gave breathing space mm -hmm. to fuba mm -hmm. you know for them to sit down so many things have been violated yeah. crowds checking uh players testing all these things all of that. you know and all those, all those are things that could have been solved at that time you know mm -hmm. but like i said i hope that there's a plan mm -hmm. okay i don't know if the league is going to be uh rerun restarted you know continue well, uh, from where we left off after the halting of the league by national council of sports yeah. former general secretary made it very clear that it is not going to be restarted even if it is halted until next year yeah the, where it stopped because i remember by the time uh, the league was halted yeah uh, it, uh there were only two games per team and some teams were left to play one, one game, game to the end of the regular season yeah that was in the national basketball league yeah. top flight yeah. and then same with the ladies so he made it very clear that uh, the games tribunal co uh, had a brief uh, meeting and they came to a consensus yeah. that even if the league is restarted next year it will start from where it stopped it's <laughs> not going to unwind yeah yeah so basically we are getting back into playing from if i had one game to go i have yes. to play my one game yes uh, like falcons <laughs> you're a falcon player so <laughs> you know that you can't undo <laughs> the losses <laughs> that you had if you are to get there you, uh, i believe falcons was left with two games to yeah we had about two games season. Season. Two, two important, two important two games actually mathematic mathematically speaking when you look at the table if falcons actually is able to get those two wins those are four points qualify for, for the playoffs yes mm. but you look at other teams like jkl who are in a also pretty bad situation with the team they before, have before before jkl was sixth on the table yeah uh, they were sixth mm. and they had a couple of games to go yeah. and with the way they had been playing mm. things were a bit tight then you put into perspective that they had other internal issues they, they still have the internal they still issues. have the internal issues yeah, they, they, they struggle uh, at home so coming back for them would be a very do they even have a team first of all well the, the players are the still the contracts are contract according <laughs> to uh jeff nyange the outgoing president yeah. mm. so you know it, it puts us in a very tricky situation uh at some point i was reading on uh, on facebook and someone was saying why don't we just do this like the footballers did and oh. just give the you know the oh. championship to our usual people <laughs> <laughs> so but we don't have that rule in our rules and regulations of uh fuba but this is fuba mm. things keep changing remember and, uh, unless there's a, remember we've even had not had the general assembly meeting we like still haven't had that yeah and so how is fuba going to enact a new and, regulation and no this, this without involving all the <laughs> team managers the interesting thing is that this is fuba remember the decision they came up with that uh the teams that did not participate uh, are definitely relegated. relegated then after some time it was over time was over time the two teams which are relegated get to play in a, a one of tournament play in tournament or something yeah. like that yeah. so we can't really be surprised that you know whatever decision will be taken we might wake up one morning and they tell us okay mm. these are the champions that's, we are going to restart from there that's, that's <laughs> the thing with uh, the federation and something that they should actually iron out yeah they don't have rules and regulations written in stone yeah 
So they keep on being washed away mm. depending on the situation. Yeah, like 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 I said, these things need to be planned out. Mm. Okay, and I don't know if there are different factions in. Uh, in, in FUBA, where you have one side thinking, you know, we should do things like this, another side thinking we should do things like this, and sometimes it's clearly seen that and, uh, they're not on the same page. One side, it's very, very essential. Very, yeah, yeah, very essential. So mm. they should get on the same page, first of all, mm. and, you know, say this is where we're heading with basketball, and whatever falls out of this for now will be considered as a breach, you know, or a violation of rules and regulations okay we had that issue with uh city oil and their international players yeah, um, you know which was also swept kind of swept under swept the carpet, under the carpet yeah. you know so some of those things really need to be ironed out for us to move forward as a federation and like you said we've got this uh time we don't know the fate of the 2021 season okay because you have to plan for the nbl you have to plan for the ladies which has also two sections you then the d league yeah and all these other things uh which also brings into you know uh, our minds that do we still have the capacity because now most of the what we have is being pushed into the national team yeah. okay so do we have the capacity to restart the league from where it was do we still have the care you and ucu courts you know, are we going back to Lugogo? There are a lot of di the, a lot of Lugogo, dynamics. Lugogo at the moment is still out of play because even uh, indoor, indoor sports, sports is still on closure. Yeah. On outdoor sports, is the one that is allowed. The ones which are yeah. Open. So with all these dynamics, okay, you really need to sit down as a federation and you know come up with a plan, okay. And this plan should include the different stakeholders. What FUBA usually does is. Uh, FUBA sits then with the managers, okay? There is no player association, okay? The yeah. players are just like mm. you walk into a house and they say that is where you're supposed That's to sit and you sit. To, this is your bedroom. Mm. Sleep this is there. The food that you're going to you know, use. the players never get to ask why do I have to sleep in, you know, such and such a bedroom, you know? Why do we have to play at such and such a court at such and such a time? You know, the players should also get that players association so that they can have a voice in what happens when FUBA is planning all these things. Definitely, and having a voice is actually very, very key. Yeah. Just uh, last week, the head of the FUBA officials, I would call them a referees association, yeah. uh, Baker Chambad, made a very uh, brilliant and self-sacrificing gesture yeah. when he invited the officials down at Lugogo and then uh, donated uh, foodstuffs to them yeah. for during this uh, lockdown period to assist them and also get to know how they are doing, what should be done when the league starts, yeah. uh, who still is on board, who needs assistance elsewhere. Yeah. So I believe it was a very brilliant move, very brilliant yeah, giving them foodstuffs, sugar, uh, what, uh, all that, uh, baking flour mm. yeah. and all that. And all of this happened with the assistance of uh, partner no, with the partnership yeah. with uh, Supreme and also Muhammad Santo. Mm. So you see that now if the head of referees is looking out for his own, ensuring to know are they fine, how are they doing? Yeah. When the league restarts when they call up upon us, yeah. how are we? How are my people? Yeah. How are the people that actually I'm heading? Yeah. Um, the referees and the officials, the table officials, and you know, also the guys who set up for the games, they, they are very unappreciated people, okay? A basketball game cannot run without a referee. That would just end up being a pickup <laughs> basketball game. And yet okay. the fans are always hurling every sort of... The fans are the there. players, you know. Yeah. You make a funny call and, you know, they just want to eat you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, when you step off the basketball court, do we ever take time to just really, you know, look at the referees and what kind of life they are leading? You know, you might see a referee on court, but when he goes home, he has a couple of, you know, situations that he has to deal with, which we will never know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... For Monday to take a step like that and consider, you know, not just his colleagues that he works with, mm -hmm. but that frater fraternity, yeah. as you know, the officials, was a very good move, which I believe that... Considered, all of them were considered, yes. if, including even uh, the individuals that wipe the court, let's yeah. say when it rains, mm -hmm. ensure to set up yeah. and everything, put up those uh, the rings, put up the nets yeah. and everything. Basically, I would call it 
the background st- the yeah. background stuff the people you never see actually you know yeah. doing all the work yeah. and it's amazing that you know whenever you mention Ugandan basketball Muhammad Santur is you know <laughs> some, some, somewhere some, in, somewhere in, there in the background yeah? mm-hmm. which means he's actually doing a good uh, good thing for yeah. Ugandan basketball uh, I would have loved to see, you know, FUBA coming in to take care of its officials Definitely. and, you know, its workers. But maybe sometimes their hands are also tied, you know. Mm-hmm. But even if your hands are tied, I mean, you can go a certain distance mm-hmm. taking care of your people. So mm-hmm. for Baker Monday, it was an amazing thing. And my call also goes out to all uh, team managers, mm-hmm. you know, all the different stakeholders. I mean, check on your players, you know, check on your employees are they okay for it doesn't stop at someone coming to put points you know on that score sheet for you it's more about their life off the basketball court you know even if you do even if you don't have finances sometimes you know just giving someone a call goes a long way finding out how are you are you doing okay are you fine how is your health how are the people around you yeah i mean you go and ask any basketball if their manager has ever called them when the season is not on Most of them even don't have their numbers when the season is off. Exactly, you know, so it, it, it's a culture that we really need to adopt, you know, take care of your people while they are playing and when they are not playing. Okay. It goes, I think that that's actually the missing link we have in, you know, winning championships and really doing a good job. When people feel appreciated, then they, they will do something the extra free. mile. Yes. Emma, as we wind up, the international to- scene, yeah. the NBA, Russell Westbrook <laughs> huh? going to the Lakers. I uh, think that a is. Lot of, uh, there, there's been quite a lot of talk about that. Uh, your last word on that, as we summarize. So there's a there's, there's a friend of mine. We keep saying, you know, when 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 the playoffs come, mm. there's always that thing of say say Lakers in four, which means Lakers are going to win in four games. <laughs> so when I saw the Russell book uh, signing, uh-huh. I sent a message and said Lakers in three. We don't <laughs> even need the fourth game. <laughs> 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 like as in three. Like as in three. We don't even need, uh, you game know, two, uh, games to go mm-hmm. down the stretch. But it's, for me, it's it's a 50-50 situation. Okay? Because now you have LeBron James, who's a beast on the basketball court. Uh-huh. Then you put in another beast in Russell Westbrook. Then you have Anthony Davis. Then you have Anthony Davis. Uh-huh. Okay? It's, it's, it's going to be amazing. If these guys... Then you have put Kuzma. their heads together. Then you have Gasol. No, Kuzma, uh, Montreal, and uh, Gasol. No, no, those guys were traded actually. Mm-hmm. Three players were traded for, with for two draft picks yeah, to get one to guy, get one Russell guy. Westbrook. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. it's really going to be amazing to watch them. And uh, Russell Westbrook, Mr. Triple Double, okay, and LeBron James. It's something that you'd never believe that would actually happen in the NBA, but here we are. You know, uh, what I liked most among the tweets is that. Can the NBA allow the Lakers to play with two balls? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to reach, <laughs> reach that level. <laughs> they might even need three, you know, at uh, this rate. That was, that, that was quite very, very, very <laughs> common <popular. laughs> <laughs> And on, away from also the Lakers, I think going down the stretch, uh, other players, you know, NBA is moving parts here and there. It, it, it's a business, you know. Yeah, so very, very players very are changing yeah. here and there. Dam- Damian Lillard, you know, was rumored mm. uh, that he wanted out of Portland, but he mm. says he's going to stay. He just needs a better team mm. around him. But I also want to reach a point whereby we talk about Ugandan basketball, you know, mm. in the same way. These players signed with this one, so they're making a super team and on they're, this they're side. They're making a, a superstar <laughs> team, then they say that this one is being traded to, to this country. Yeah. We are going to get there. We are going to if the there. program is followed and the policies that are in place. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, it, prior to the start of the season, there is a program called um, uh, for the girl, for, for, for the girls. Mm. Huh? Yeah. How world, how game. Yeah. But you see that if that program is not followed, yeah, then women's basketball will still follow. Very true. We will still we'll stay crumble. down. Mm. However, when you look at it on paper, it's a brilliant program. It's Very a true. brilliant policy. Yeah. But now the problem comes to only one thing: execution. That's the biggest thing we have, and I hope that the execution will be really good this time because uh, ladies' basketball has really been pushed. You know in the background and we we'll need to bring it back to the foreground okay and support the ladies but also away from that not only the ladies we need to support high school basketball back in the day it was a big thing but now with like two tournaments the whole year i mean yeah. which, which what kind of players are we raising so the excitement of uh, going for the national sprite, sprite and all these things yeah. and that excitement is not there anymore so not only ladies basketball but also the high school basketball 
uh, basically basketball, the grassroots, you know, we should really consider all these things and, you know, put Uganda out there. But I know we're out of time, mm -hmm. but I've um, been watching the Olympics mm -hmm. and USA had made a, another, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, another dream team. Dream team. Yeah. And it is causing a lot of contention <laughs> because the, the dream team is, has holes punched in the wind. <laughs> I think you know the United States went with this thing of, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's ours, yeah, so it's let's us, really. let's go and take. But but the world has caught up in basketball. That, that's a very brilliant analysis because uh, prior when you looked at the previous uh, team, the the, the, the yeah the Dream ninety two team, team, yeah, yeah uh, that was the analysis actually that the one that had Michael Jordan and, mm. and everything, the world had not caught, caught up. up. The world yeah. was sleeping. They were looking at them as an alien team. Yeah. Now the analysis is. That the world has caught up. They are no longer aliens. <laughs> they are, they are, they are, the there are no more people alien. now. It, yes. It's a level playing field. Because by the time you lose to Australia, to Nigeria, yeah. and the amazing thing is that Nigeria has about eight NBA players. Actually, they, they, they need to win their game against so the Czech Republic. Uh, against the Czech Republic in order to stay in contention. Uh, it would be a weird thing for the Americans to, you know, to be kicked out of the Olympics at this level. You know, it would be the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> With, the, with them having all the superstars on yeah. the team. But you see, the whole team also lacks leadership. Yeah. Who, when you look at all the stars, who, who, who should take, uh, who has the leadership role there? That's the thing. Uh, so you have all the super scorers. You have KD, you have Damian Lillard. What, what like you said, leadership is missing, you know? I, I wish that LeBron James had actually taken a step, mm -hmm. Stefan Curry had taken a step and said, you know what, let me get on the team. Even if they had not played, they still bring that form of leadership. Bring a different element yes, of the floor. Some kind of structure that you know allows each player to explore their talents, which would have been good. It's it's like an NBA All Star game. The last All Star, LeBron didn't play much on his team. He gave guys you know time to play, which I think they should have used the same exact kind of format and put it uh, to this team for the Olympics. Yes. Definitely, it has been slam dunk basketball. COVID is real. Continue following the SOPs. the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed technology has come in they have moved on yes we're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child on to tiktok has surpassed what's yap mm -hmm. the other one i call uh, I, I never call it facebook it's book face <laughs> why are you on book face <laughs> dad it's facebook yes Me, I keep saying yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. It was like the Psalms, when you look at David, he's passing through hard things, but then he's willing to talk about them. So music allowed me to be real, authentic. To God, he uses song to minister to me. So it was more, it's personal, I can relate to it, and he's helping me overcome through that, to be able to be used as that vessel.
that delivers this message which I know that I've just borrowed from heaven. My music statement is to write music that will be able to speak to the heart, soul and spirit. Restoring the goodness. You know when in the Bible it says and he, he looked at it and it was good. The message that I have, there are 10 songs. They will be specifically invoking that that God has already said that, that we have to embrace as his image to restore goodness in this world. Music is not what defines you. For me, that was a great revelation that my identity is more in God, in who God calls me. If I can inspire you to you also to use your gifts and talents to make a difference, I would have played my part in this world. I will rise and rise. Now is the time. Rise and praise you, Lord. people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. People at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Welcome to the Elders Wisdom Circle. My name is Eddie Okila on this Saturday afternoon, straight out of uh, Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, from the Pearl of Africa, 
serving to the rest of the world is the elders wisdom circle and of course today we talk about raising children in the african traditional society setting what we call it takes a village to raise a child mm. in that context i bring you the one and only 54 years of age third born son of the former president idi amin dada the field marshal the great man of africa the conqueror of the british <laughs> empire ladies and gentlemen jaffa remo amin ah! yeah. <laughs> welcome to the show thank you thank you how are you i'm fine feeling blessed <laughs> and uh, you are in the month of ramadan how does that make you feel 11 days of it uh you get in touch with who you are mm -hmm. and your feelings and i love the control 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 mm -hmm. Okay. and the sharing 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 by the way that's my mantra <laughs> which touches yes. on what we are going to discuss today yes. Yes. and uh, i'm feeling blessed honestly welcome to the show jaffa mm, and uh of course to everyone out there we're live on facebook on twitter on youtube this program exists to give you an insight into the wisdom of the elders in africa also to the wisdom that we export to the people in the western world mm. while we compare the wisdom of the elders in the western world vis-a-vis mm. -vis the wisdom of the elders in the african continent mm -hmm. then we fuse Thank then you. we see which one is actually more